It's always said to never cross the boss, but in WWE, there is truly just one boss, at least for most of the time, in Vince McMahon. That has happened more than once. You can't run an empire the size of the WWE without rubbing some people the wrong way, making enemies on your way to the top, and maybe even severing some relationships along the way. While some of the names on this list coming up have had bad contacts with McMahon, others have made up with him. Let's take a look at 10 WWE superstars who had real life feuds with Vince McMahon. Hit the like button and get into the comments below. Number 10, Bruno Sammartino. Bruno is Uno, but apparently he's not number one on this list. He is one of the most important superstars in WWE history. Without Sammartino, what WWE became what it became eventually. Sammartino was a man of virtue, and in the early 1990s, he began a feud with Vince McMahon that spanned over two decades. He was critical of the quote, roided up superstars of the golden era, while speaking against the direction of the Attitude Era and the quote, vulgar Stone Cold Steve Austin. In short, he didn't like the direction that WWE had gone, despite being one of its biggest stars in the past and he removed himself from wrestling for years. It was Triple H who approached him in 2013 for a Hall of Fame induction, which Sammartino first rejected. By this point, WWE had been PG for five years, and the culture of wrestling had certainly adapted with the times. He was happy to enter the Hall of Fame as it adapted. This was when he finally buried the hatchet with Vince McMahon, who fully acknowledged the importance of San Martino to the McMahon family and WWE as a whole. Number nine, Paul Heyman. While the ECW mastermind was well vetted into WWE, the feud between him and a creative conflict with Vince McMahon began in 2006. Paul Heyman was an important creative figure in WWE at the time. He had clear differences in his vision with Vince McMahon and something that needed to be resolved. They began to not like each other and it was just a conflicting work environment. The silver-tongued Paul Heyman would return to WWE to be the mouthpiece for the beast Brock Lesnar. His second stint in WWE would also evolve into him being one of the most prolific talking characters in WWE in the last 20 years, which is perhaps why Heyman is such a pivotal character, one that may be perceived as a Hall of Fame performer in the future. Number 8. Vern Gagne 11-time World Wrestling Champion Vern Gagne formed the American Wrestling Association, which was the hotbed for pro wrestling in the Midwest before the national expansion of Vince McMahon's WWE. And it built names like Hulk Hogan, who became the name in the WWE. At one point, there was a max exodus of talent from AWA, including Jesse Ventura, Bobby Heenan, Ken Patera, Gene Okerlund, and most importantly, Hogan, leaving McMahon with the top names from the AWA in AWA with a huge gap in talent that fans were now seeing on a different program. Ganya was understandably upset at his top talent for moving to another promotion, and he allegedly bribed the Iron Sheik to, quote, break Hulk Hogan's leg during a match. This has been widely disputed, but widely talked about at the same time. Thankfully, the Sheik was a professional, and refused to break Hulk Hogan's leg. Number seven, Bret the Hitman Hart. This one makes a lot of sense. McMahon, of course, projected the infamous Montreal screw job upon Bret the Hitman Hart at Survivor Series 1997, screwing him literally out of the WWE world title as he left the company for WCW in the middle of the Monday Night Wars, one of the most competitive periods in the history of professional wrestling, and screwed him out of that title in his home country of Canada, 
all of this displayed on the Wrestling With Shadows documentary, which certainly painted McMahon in a bad light. Though McMahon would certainly say that Brett screwed Brett. The debate over this went on for decades and may even go on for all time. The bitterness between the two would go on for years, with Bret Hart having a stroke in 2002, the two parties beginning to mend fences over that medical issue, and four years later, Hart would be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, with both sides meeting on good terms. Eventually, they would be able to perform an angle at the 2010 WrestleMania. Number 6. Nails Kevin Walcoats, known by the name Nails, wrestled for the WWE in a few different stints. However, in 1992, it was the end of the road for Nails with a Z in WWE. He had wrestled the Big Boss Man in a special live event at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden, where wrestlers expected fatter paychecks. Depending on who you ask, the figure that Nails was expected to receive was between $600 and $8,000. Yeah, that's a big margin. Either way, Nails was not happy with the outcome and confronted McMahon by concerning him with the payout in his office at the arena. And he began by choking him and immediately was fired. The incident led to a series of back and forth lawsuits between the two parties. He even testified against McMahon in the infamous 1994 steroid trial led by the federal government of America against McMahon and the WWE, stating that he had been told to take steroids by the WWE chairman. Of course, we all know how that turned out. Number 5. The Ultimate Warrior the Ultimate Warrior and McMahon feuded for a good part of two decades. What began as a contractual dispute over payments turned into widespread, well-publicized bitterness and hatred at the highest level, which led into courtroom battles as well. Warrior would have a few runs in WWE, but he would also vocally oppose everything that the company stood for for years after they had departed. While it seemed like the two would never make amends, it happened thanks to Triple H and the Warrior given the rightful place he deserved as a WWE Hall of Famer before his unfortunate tragic passing just a few days later. Number 4. Jesse the Body Ventura In a heated issue with major implications on the wrestling business, Jesse Ventura, once one of the major voices of broadcasting in WWE and a former WWE superstar in his own right, entered into a courtroom fight with Vince McMahon and the WWE, and it remains one of the few outcomes that was victorious for someone challenging Vince McMahon in a courtroom. McMahon told Ventura he never paid WWE superstars royalties. Ventura took McMahon to court over this and won, but perhaps one of the biggest reasons for the animosity is the fact that he pushed for unionization in talent within the 80s wrestling heyday of Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan himself was reportedly outed as a rat who informed McMahon and wanted to kill the union effort, but this has been disputed by both sides. A lot of the control that McMahon would have over superstars in the decades that followed was reportedly tied to this movement by Ventura, but that itself is also disputed. Number 3. Randy Savage Macho Man Randy Savage was a key figure in the 80s rock and wrestling era of WWE, with Vince McMahon fully trusting the Macho Man with that main event level just below Hulk Hogan. However, when he forced Randy Savage to step back from in-ring competition to a color commentator role, the Macho Man felt it was better just to jump ship to WCW where he could continue to compete in the ring. Although there has been widespread conspiracy theories, the actual reason for the bitterness between McMahon and Macho Man 
is rooted in the fact that some think that Macho Man abandoned the WWE for their biggest competitor with a big budget. And WWE was criticized for inducting the Macho Man posthumously rather than when he was alive, though that's worth debating as well. Number 2. Stone Cold Steve Austin for a few years, Stone Cold Steve Austin took WWE to heights that had never been seen in the Attitude Era. He is inarguably one of the biggest pro wrestling superstars of all time. He simply pushed the needle that far during the highest peak in the business. This is why his falling out with Vince McMahon and the WWE was so severe after he refused to put over Brock Lesnar on a random episode of Monday Night Raw. Austin alleged that he had wanted a proper build-up if he were to lose to Brock, but the disagreement between him and Vince McMahon led to him walking onto the company for over half a year. Austin would eventually return to the company for a brief return in in-ring action and would wrap up a majority of his pro wrestling career at WrestleMania 19 in a classic bout against The Rock. The off-screen feud between McMahon and Austin was much shorter than the on-screen one between Stone Cold and the evil corporate master, Mr. McMahon. Number 1. CM Punk while CM Punk is certainly someone that people see as a recent enemy of Vince McMahon and WWE, he is certainly one of the biggest. Yes, this may be something where people have an age approach towards Triple H and Vince McMahon. Punk had a vocal, outstanding issue and disdain for the chairman of the board. While we saw his issues appear as on-screen storylines in the unforgettable summer of Punk Run in 2011, the relationship between the two sides was a very inflammatory one when it ended in 2014 with Punk walking out on the company. Many saw this as a culmination of creative frustration, health issues with Punk, and the company simply not being something that Punk wanted to be a part of anymore being on the road for years, major medical issues, and WWE's just creative conflict with him had just become enough for Punk. The straw that broke the camel's back was when WWE was sending him termination papers on his wedding day. While Vince McMahon has publicly apologized for the nature of Punk's termination, Punk rejected it by calling it simply a publicity stunt. What do you think? Sound off in the comments below.